Well, hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead. Since the Wildlife Department's National Archery in the Schools program was launched in 2004, the program has exponentially grown from just a handful of pilot schools to now over 700 across the state. Over the years, about 380,000 students have participated in the program. And Oklahoma's program is nationally recognized as one of the best in the country, not only for its design and participation, but for every year producing some of the top shooters in the nation. A wildlife department that works hand in hand with schools to teach kids the value and skills of archery. Just another reason to love Oklahoma and the adventures that await you. try to find some some bigger crappie show you guys how to live scope and identify larger crappie separate them from the small crappie and uh, just show you some tips and techniques of where I look for them when I go to a new lake so what I'm seeing is we're along this rip rat and you're seeing a lot of rocks but there's an obvious fish separated from the bottom right there. And, and one of the things that I always look for is, is crappie are a stationary fish, so it's not moving. Except for there he turned up. See him chasing my bait, there he's on. Really, uh, you know, that's a typical crappie here on Hudson pound and a quarter fish, a uh, big old fat female. Got some uh, eggs in her, so we're gonna go ahead and kick her loose today. We're not trying to keep any fish. So we've got a fish at uh, roughly 10 feet out. So I'm gonna drop my bait down, and I'm paying a lot of attention to the depth of my bait. I'm trying to keep it above him at all times, and I'm just bringing my bait across his body. We didn't get a response, so I'm gonna do that again. We're going to center the boat up, try to drop the bait so that it falls in front of him, stop it above him, and basically I'm going to bring this right across his nose. So these fish are not wanting to bite a lot today. But again, there you see he's indexed up. He's following, following, following. I'm lifting slightly there. I felt some weight. Now, another solid, that's probably close to a pound and a half fish. Again, big old fat female. Uh, we are in a pre-spawn condition. And uh, so we're gonna kick them back, let them swim today. So I'm running a 32nd ounce hair jig. Um, running a 32nd ounce hair jig below a quarter ounce weight. I've just got some uh, bobber stops this pegging the weight in there. I'm running 12 pound line. Um, that's the reason you're seeing me just lift the fish in. We're not grabbing a net or anything because I'm running 12 pound line. And uh, with a 32nd ounce jig, it's a natural color, and I'm really a big fan of natural color. I'm basically just trying to mimic what a, a small minnow would look like in the water. So uh, silver and gray is the pattern there with the white head. Um, you'll see uh, most of my baits that are on my boat are that silver and gray pattern. Um, but again, really what we're doing is we're just dropping this bait in, and something to realize too is that as that bait is falling, that quarter ounce weight is heavier than the 30 seconds, so it's falling inversed and as soon as we get near the fish I'll stop the quarter ounce weight the 30 second ounce jig will fall down there and then I'll present that jig to the to the bait or to the fish so just remember that as we're kind of watching this on the screen you're going to see that uh, there's two individual signals going down one of them being the, the lead weight and one of them being the jig the lead weight will be going down first I'll stop it and you'll see it invert and then we'll present that the, the little 30 second ounce jig down to the fish. 
So we see two jigs falling. I just re inverted them and I'm trying to bring it down and he swam off. That looks like, yep, it's too crappie. And fish on. A little bit better fish there. Close to, that to be a pound and a half fish. It's a crappie, but not a real big crappie. He didn't miss it that time. But a solid, you know, 12 inch, 11 inch, 12 inch fish. Pretty little guy. It is not a big one. It just looked like a big one. Not bad. Another pound and a half type of fish, maybe pound and three eighths. Just mainly because of that big old fat belly, big old fat female. So these guys got tired of watching me catch these fish. I've been having a blast doing it. So we got Smokey and uh, he's gonna come up here and he's gonna try this out. I've made it look pretty easy, so we'll see if it really is. Another one coming in. I really shouldn't even fish for this one. It's too little, but he's just sitting there. You make this look really easy. <laughs> It usually takes me about two hours to get the, the guys on the first fish. Bring your tip to the left, right about there. Oh, that one's chasing it. Now you got him. Lift. You didn't even know you had a bite. He ain't nothing. He's about this long, but he wasn't supposed to bite. See him here. We can get him off there. You can do it. I'll find you a better fish. That's embarrassing. I don't even usually let my clients catch that kind of stuff. <laughs> Look at that. Slowly, slowly, even slower. There. You can just. Oh. Swing him in. There you go. Swing him in. Look at that. So does that beat your personal best? Yeah, by a long shot. By a long shot. That's a good fish. So that fish weighed 1.41 pounds. Personal best? Personal best, yep. Good job. Well, let's get a picture, is that okay? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Lost your, there you are. Okay, lift up slowly. Lift up, lift up, keep going up. Got him. <laughs> I've seen the pole. Uh-oh. I think he got a big one. Flip him in. <laughs> Heavy, ain't he? I don't know if he was as big as we wanted, but that's a good fish anyway. 158. Let's see if we can. Drinking on us, 154. Losing water weight, it's dripping off. Irregardless, it's a solid pound and a half fish. Yeah. Good job. So, you know, I come out here to shoot some photos for Outdoor Oklahoma, and uh, the next thing you know, I'm in front of the camera catching some crappie. Big crappie to me. So, 
got my PR and I couldn't ask for a better day. So I'm ready to come out and maybe I'll quit my job and do this professionally. I don't know. <laughs> All right, I think I finally caught a big one here. Another big old fat female. And you know, the, the technology that we have today just uh, allows us to do this. It, uh, just picking off single fish, we're, we're literally in 20 foot of water out here catching fish that are suspended and roaming. Um, the, and it's all about that forward looking sonar, whether it be live scope or Lorentz live sight. And I know hummingbirds getting ready to come out with it. Um, takes a lot of hours. Uh, you know, I've got 3,000 hours of staring at this screen, but right there's what, what makes it worthwhile. Come. When I come out of the house of an evening to go down to their kennel, I do that. Just so they know it's me. And I'll start doing that with gunfire as well. I'll come out of the house, my dog kennel's about 100 yards from the house, and I'll shoot a blank pistol, and then when I show up, they're excited to see me. So they learn over time that that gunfire is something that's gonna be positive. Well, everybody likes to get a wing out, and that tells you a little bit about your dog's conformation, their intensity, their drive, do they have that chase? You know, ultimately you're gonna train the dog to not chase, he's gonna be trained to hold the point and wait for you to get there, but you got to have a puppy that wants to chase something, birds. A wing substitutes for that early on. So a dog that wouldn't be showing any interest here would be one you might want to back off of. But all these guys are basically chasing the wing, and every now and then you can get them to stop and point. And then that gives you right there a little bit of a sense of their conformation, their tail set, how high they hold their head. A dog really doesn't come into their nose till they're five to seven months old. So they'll visually point like this here early on, sometimes six weeks old, five weeks old, but that scent, uh, their olfactory doesn't really kick in until they're six, seven months old. I've had dogs that wouldn't point scent for eight months, almost to the point you want to give up on them, and they turn out to be some of the best, best uh, pointing dogs ever. Everybody talks about pedigree. Are they papered? Are they pedigreed? And that's all important, keeping good bloodlines of dogs, but when I'm picking a pup, I don't go to the pedigree first. I want to see the parents. I wouldn't mind hunting with the guy that owns the parents. And I want a puppy out of two dogs, male and female, that are just barn burning, quail finding machines. But I like to run these puppies with my big dogs and they automatically learn the name of the game is to run. The big dogs are gonna run and these puppies will run with them. So it's important to get them out early, go to the park, walk with them. Another thing is they naturally like to retrieve at this age. Well, a dog, if you don't mess with them from this age on, they will give up that retrieving instinct. A puppy loves retrieving. The best thing you can do is get a sock and put a knot in it. And you want to retrieve, play fetch in a hallway or somewhere where they can't get away. I'm going to throw this, but she's probably going to just run around with it, and that's okay too. What I'm doing here is every day I'm throwing them something to pick up, and they can run around with it all they want, and they're learning the game is to, to retrieve. Here you go. Now you gotta make sure they see it first. And she's already distracted by the wing. A lot of distractions. Let's see if I can get her to fetch it. Just pick it up, and all you want is to grab it and run around with it. Puppy, 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 puppy. Puppy, puppy. I, you notice I'm whistling. I like to whistle, because that's gonna carry throughout their life. They're gonna get used to my tone. Right there, he's running around with it. All I'm wanting there is to see that he's got an instinct to put something in his mouth and keep it in there and run around. Now, if you'll keep that up from when they're like eight weeks old on, the retrieving ability of that dog has improved remarkably versus you start your dog at six months. Another thing you want to do early is uh, collar break them. What I actually do is I've got a little stake out and I'll put a collar on the dog and you stay with them. Collar your dog up and you stake them out and it, they'll fight it, and it just, it teaches them to give in to the collar. The collar and their neck is gonna be your steering wheel. That's gonna be how you guide, direct, and train a, a dog, really throughout its life. But you gotta get them broke, 
it's kind of like breaking in a pair of boots. It doesn't feel good at first, but they'll get broke. These guys have not had a collar on, but if you'll stake them out with a collar, you know, stay put and watch them because you don't want to get them tangled up or get them hurt. But once they finally give in to that stake out on the collar, you're making progress. But you can use a, we're just going to modify this thing. It's just show you how they'll probably, she'll probably fight it. But basically you just put the collar so you put it on her. She's never had anything on her, so we just got something around her neck. So we're just piddling with her. She's she's doing pretty good right there. So there we go. And you're just getting them used to having something on their neck. And they'll fight it a little bit. And then you just keep keep your hands on them. So you're just touching them all the time. So I'm gonna try to stand her up and hold her head up. There we go. Good girl. Good girl, so she's doing really good. Got that tail up. I like to touch my dogs all the time, even my older dogs. I'll touch them when I'm in the field. I'll go up and style up their tails, pet them, tell them good. And it just gets your dog comfortable with people. The best dog is a dog that loves you. You gotta love your dog and the dog's gotta love you. You see this guy, he stuck his nose in a kennel and the big dog took advantage of him. Yeah, he got a big old hump on his nose, yeah. A dog that's got a real high tail that's going back and forth is going to be one that's got a really nice tail set when he points. If they don't have a real high noon tail set, that tail will be down a lot lower when they're running. But if their tail's going back and forth all the time, you know they're having a good time. The other thing really is uh, probably where you see the biggest problems in dogs is people in uh, just not introducing a dog to gunfire at the right time or in the wrong way. So I would say one of the main problems in taking on somebody's dog to mess with or train is they've introduced gunfire in a way that makes that dog gun shy. I hear guys saying, fetch it, get it, bring it, drop it, give it, fetch it. Fetch means go get it and bring it back. If it's load up, it's load up, not get in here, get over here, kennel. If it's load up, keep it load up. If it's kennel, that's the dog box, that's the crate, that's the kennel, whatever it is. And woe, you gotta teach them woe and their name, which is basically come. If you can get them to come to you and you can get them to stop, you can hunt quail with anybody. The other one's already off in the brush, but, so I just like to see if I can get them to my command to follow me. Puppies, puppy, let's go. Let's hunt, come on. Let's go, pup. Yep. Find a bird. Find a bird. Find a bird. During early May on Canton Lake in northwest Oklahoma, an event occurs that draws fishermen from far and wide. Known as the Canton Walleye Rodeo, the four-day event is so popular, fishermen from as far as Minnesota have come to enter. To be successful at walleye fishing does require a special knack a skill developed through experience and patience. We recently discovered a four-generation family of expert walleye fishermen right in Canton's backyard. Willard Peoples of Visay, Oklahoma, attended the first walleye rodeo in 1967 and has been bringing his family ever since. His son Don, his grandson Alan, and now his great-grandson Jacob would never think of missing a walleye rodeo. They've won a few trophies over the years, but for the most part, for them, it's just a great time to share and fish together. Grandson Alan Peoples speaks for the family. It's one of those deals where you, you really don't know why you come for it, except that you just keep coming back. And we have a lot of fun, and we normally catch some fish. We, if, if anybody on the lake's catching fish, we'll, we'll catch some. We're 12 feet of water now in those lures. Leave there, buddy. Leave you there. Reel him in. Here you go. Reel him in. Keep it out to the side. Do you good? Thanks for joining me at the net, Jake. What do you think, bud? Oh, there he is. Sandy. Nice little sand bass. Okay, get him up here to the side. You'll have him hooked real good. 
Let me help you get him in there. There we go. How about that? We catch about as many fish on the on the golf flies and the jigs that we put above the lure as we do the lure itself. But, uh, we're running in about 12, 13 foot of water here, and these are, are hot and tots, and they'll run about eight feet probably. So we can get down there pretty close to the bottom right in here, and, and it seems to work well with the jigs tight above the lure. I guess it simulates a, a little fish chasing a bug or something in the water. Dark day, dark lure. Mm -hmm. Bright day, bright lure. I don't know if that works or not. This little lure here, I think it's kind of a local lure. They call it a super dock. It doesn't really have any features to it other than it's a soft plastic lure with a, a hole drilled through it with a little leader that slips through to a, to a treble hook. But it's got BBs in it, but on this one you can't see the BBs. Uh, in the past three or four years, we have really caught the sand bass and crappie on this little lure. It runs real shallow. And uh, what, two years ago, Jacob was using one of these and he couldn't hardly keep it in the water. We had to keep shaking fish off of it. Ease him up into the boat now. Yes, sir. Look at there. Got a whopper. Yeah, he's a little guy, isn't he? We might just have to throw him back. Let him grow up a little more. You think? Okay. You'll throw him back? Okay. okay, here you go. Throw him back. He lost yours, bud. Alright, uh, leave him leave him out. Yeah, it's a walleye. It's a walleye! Is it 18 inches? It looks like a pretty good one. It's 18 inches, Grandpa. Well, we can keep it. Well, then we'll have two walleyes. It's a caper. We can have it. Grandpa, you smashed a coffee cup. Yeah, look at there. It's a caper. That's, nice walleye. That's 18 inches long. No, it's 20 inches long. Oh, he's got a fish. Grant thinks he hung up on a fish. Then why are we reeling in? What kind of fish is he? I don't know. I can't see him. No can. Can't get him. He good? Should be if we can't get him up. Walleye! <gasps> yeah, he's a good. One. Look he's at 18 there. inches. Yeah. He's 18 inches. You know oh, this. Five. Five pounds. A real nice one. Well, we hope today's stories remind you that Oklahoma is such a perfect state to explore. So, however you choose to enjoy our incredible natural world, remember that your adventure starts with Outdoor Oklahoma. So, which, which kids are yours? Little Axe, so they're doing really good. Outdoor Oklahoma is produced by the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation and is proud to serve and be funded entirely by sportsmen and women and outdoor enthusiasts who love and appreciate all things wild in the great state of Oklahoma. Is that, which one is he? The, the gray sweats this, and the hoodie. Oh, okay. 